There are about 1.4 billion cars in the world. And at first glance, it seems like a pretty healthy chunk of them belong to Jay Leno. But how does someone go about collecting classic cars? Who do you call? How much should you pay? Is it a good investment? Well, I went to Jay's garage in Burbank, California to find out how to collect cars. So Jay. This is the garage. <laughs> It's incredible. You've got you've bought a few cars in your time. Yeah, I, I I just never sell anything. So talk me through your process. I mean, everyone I know just goes on bring a trailer and look, drools over cars. Yeah. Is that what you're doing too? Or well, it is the more money than brains club. But okay. when you when you buy a car, <laughs> it's a rational process okay. made irrationally. You need a car, but you really don't need that. You right. know, if you get in a Miata. You go, this is all anybody needs. It's got a convertible, it's a five speeds, it's a stick shift, it's zippy, as my mom would say, it's fun to drive, it's comfortable, heater, air conditioning. That's really all you need. Sure. Why you but need this. Then we have this. Then you get into the the art of it and why why you like it. You know, a lot of people say it's a terrible investment in classic cars. I heard uh, oh, from Jack Chank O'Leary, you know, Mr. Wonderful talking about, oh, he collects wine. I, that seems ridiculous to me, wine. Yeah. But cars, it's kinetic artwork, uh, like the Lamborghini Mura. These are now worth minimum million dollars. This one I essentially got for free. I got it in the early 80s. Dean Martin bought it new. Okay. His son cracked the, uh, the crankcase, the engine seat, you know, just. It was rough. It was rough. And back in those days, when you had an Italian car like this, you had to know someone in Italy who spoke Italian. You couldn't just call the factory and auto parts. How did you find out about this car? A buddy of mine bought it. He was a teacher, and he thought he would, and it just got to be too much. And the wife said, things sit in the yard. Give it to Leno, you know, so <laughs> it was one of those deals. See, it costs just as much to restore and repair a valuable car as it does a worthless car. Yeah. So you might as well start with something valuable. Can we talk about this car? Yeah, this is a, this is a good example. Okay, this this is a, a 1962 Maserati. Gorgeous. This, yeah, this car I found, there was engine problems and transmission problems, and it was sitting at a uh, repair shop for a long, long time, and they just wanted to get rid of it. I think it was $25,000. This was- Wow. This was 15 years ago. And we took it, brought it back here. We just need to do the engine and the transmission and, and some other work to it. And now it's fine. And now it's, it's probably a $300,000 car. There are a lot of cars that were ahead of their time, in their time. They were just a little too expensive or for some reason they didn't sell. I mean, the classic example would be the McLaren F1 over there. Uh, when that came out, it was about a million dollars. And people thought, a million dollars for a car, that's the most ridiculous, because Lamborghinis were $100,000. Then the recession hit, they were gonna make 300 of those, they built 64, couldn't sell them, the company shut down. They're only 64, they can't make any more, so the, the price of it went up. Yeah. You know, it, it's as simple, it's really the basic supply and demand. When you go to look at a car, are you one of these guys who are bringing magnets, you know, to feel underneath Well, here's the, the thing, the stuff I'm looking for, there aren't any. So if you find even the pieces of one, you buy them. Next door, I have a, a Doble steam car. They only built 40 of them. I have two of them. Okay, if you find one, <laughs> it doesn't matter what condition it's in, just buy them. Yeah. Because you're not, you're not gonna find another one. Are you scared to drive this now? Because no. it's worth so much. No, I, I mean, I, I, I drive it like a regular car. I mean, I, I drive it. Carefully, I, I don't park it down. You don't give it to a valet. Yeah. You don't park it in downtown it. LA. How closely do you pay attention to mileage or to factory I, I never, original? I never, I never look at mileage. Okay. You know, I meet guys all the time that uh, I've got a Ferrari Enzo. I've had it uh, 15 years. It's got nine miles on it. Well, oh boy. that's in worse shape than a car that's being driven regularly. So. Uh, something that has normal mileage. These are mechanical things. They, you know, oil is blood, and they need to circulate. It needs to keep keep the car running. So high mileage doesn't interest me. Okay. So what's the appeal with the Corvair? Well, the Corvair is an interesting choice because you can buy them for a couple of hundred, even maybe a few thousand dollars. It's air cooled. It's rear engine, like a Porsche. 
Uh, there's no radiator. I find them fascinating. Uh, you know, Ralph Nader went after the Corvair in his yeah. book and it got some bad press. And so consequently, the value of them went down, but they have a hardcore bunch of fans that love these things. And uh, this one here is a Corvair, um, a guy named Don Yanko, who was sort of the Carroll Shelby of Chevrolet. see this. Yeah, he, Yanko. he bought 100 of these. They gave him his own serial numbers. And he went racing, and he beat Porsche in 1966 for the championships with these Corvairs. Did you have this car in mind? You were looking for it specifically? I was looking for a Yanko Stingray. OK. Yeah, yeah. So how did, how did you, without divulging all of your secrets, how did you no find secret. it? I, I found it because you called the, called the Corvair Club uh -huh. and see who has one. Anybody want to sell? Oh. OK, and then people contact you. It's easy. And, and they say, yeah, this is what I want for it. You know, that's a little high, but this one was very good. It was very clean. It's nicely done. I said, OK, so I bought it from him. Wow. You know, whatever kind of car you're interested in, there's a club of that car. And you go on the website, and there's always an elderly person who'd been in the club for 15 or 20 years. Uh -huh. They can't drive anymore. They'd like to sell their car. You might pay a little more, but you get a car that's been maintained. Yes. And, and, and exercised properly, and you know, that type of thing. I, I, I have a car called a Tatra, it's Czechoslovakian. So one day I see a magazine, Tatra Club, Litchfield, England, or something. Oh, okay. So I call the Tatra Club. Oh, well, we have a Christmas party every year, of course. We all get together for that. I said, well, I joined the club. Oh, good, this is $80 a year, blah, 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 blah. So I said to him, well, that sounds good. I said, how many people at club, including you? Four. <laughs> well, now it's, I was the fourth guy. There's only three other guys. I go, how, how what kind of Christmas party is that really? Just yeah. you and the other three guys, now me. Yeah. How are you on space? Well, there's 140,000 square feet here. That should be enough. OK, you can wedge a few more in. Yeah. Plus the motorcycle. Uh, plus yeah, the now that one's interesting. This one. Well, this one has oh. a jet engine. What is it like to ride? Well, I mean, you can hear it's a jet. It's. And then it kicks in. You know. But it's, uh, it's fast. Wow. I would imagine. How many of these did they make? I don't know. I don't know. I think they built about a half a dozen of those. OK. Pretty rare. OK, tell me about the art of the deal. Are you a low ball offer kind of guy? No, no. OK, I, I, tell I me, I, walk I, me I through this. The people I buy car, cars from are more concerned that the car is maintained, mm. that it's not flipped. If the car is what they say it is, I usually pay the price. Really? You yeah, don't try I, to I negotiate? Don't, no, because I'm not trying to get, you know, oh. I'll say, look, I'll pay your price. Just tell me what's wrong with it. OK. OK, okay this needs to be in this. OK, and then I make a judgment whether I want it or not. And all of this making money from cars is fairly new. The real trick is, if you buy something you like and it goes up in value, great. If it goes down in value, you aren't going to sell it anyway. You know, it's cheaper than hookers and cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, your wife always knows when you come home reeking of transmission yes, fluid. Yes, she knows where you've been. No, exactly. Yes, exactly. I get it.